Another piece of advice for aspiring watercolorists is to paint as much as possible from the imagination. This develops many artistic faculties, maybe the most important being that it forces one to adapt to the ever-changing challenges presented by water-based media. You know, I did my first 250 paintings or so without a speck of drawing, often without any firm subject in mind, totally immersing myself in the watercolor experience. I believe it was the best thing I could have done. I hate to see people starting out painting from reference materials, live or photographs, yet this is how most are inclined to begin. In my opinion, it's a serious mistake because it severely limits the experiences a novice painter will encounter from the get-go. I suppose the ultimate recipe of mistaken approach from my standpoint would be a person painting from a reference and painting small. You know, imagine a tennis player starting out on a half-size court and trying to hit every ball inside the lines. You know, it's absurd. A person needs to get out there and flail away, have a lot of room to move, and not worry too much about errors. I believe the analogy is a really good one. I also did a lot of teaching on the guitar and got people using the entire neck of the guitar as soon as possible. Got them playing, you know, all the chords and scales, improvising and playing a variety of songs and styles before I let them get too involved in specifics, say, like trying to play a certain song like their favorite player. By the time they narrowed their interest, they'd had a lot of experiences and techniques happening, and they weren't scared of the instrument. They were also much more self-sufficient players because I made them think for themselves. I like to see people start with tons of paper, lots of paint and lots of colors, lots of brushes and all the sizes, and experiment. The more this one does on a large scale, the more likely watercolor will do things for you. I believe the most powerful method of learning is by discovery. You know, you can be told things all day long, but nothing makes a stronger impression than discovering something on your own. You never forget those lessons. I do want to stress that while I believe painting without reference or without drawing is a really good thing to do in the beginning, drawing is a very important thing. It's a great background to have. But I should be very honest here and admit that while I have a good amount of drawing experience, I rarely, if ever, have done any thumbnail sketching or value studies for a painting. I work by intuition as I'm doing the painting and what's in my head and what's happening on the paper begin to adapt to each other. I think it's important to mention this because some artists insist that sketches and value studies must be done. And this just demonstrates how many different approaches there are. I don't work their way, and they probably wouldn't want to work my way. One good way to paint from imagination or without a reference is not to worry about any subject matter at all. Simply get some paint on the paper. Let the medium work on its own. And if you start to see something, great. Develop it. If not, that's fine too. Just revel in the experience of color and shape, texture, your brushwork. I'm not sure why some people have an aversion to doing this, but I think it's a fear of the unknown and a desire to control everything. In my workshops, I've gotten people over a few major hurdles just by getting them to make some huge brush strokes on the paper, almost like a house painter, just for the experience of it to see how it feels to wield a brush like that. Incredibly, most of them have never done this and have never even thought about it. And to their astonishment, some very exciting and eye-opening things begin to happen. Watercolor is the most elusive medium there is, and I believe giving up some control contributes greatly to the unpredictable and spontaneous effects that great watercolors can deliver. Many of the best ideas or paintings I've come up with have been the result of accident, or at least a willingness to roll with the punches and see what happens not some rigid, preconceived plan. I said it before, the paint is a better artist than I am. Most people, every time they get into a painting session, want to paint a picture, a pretty picture. I rarely have heard about a watercolorist in a jam session, so to speak. You know, good musicians do this sort of thing all the time. Sit around playing scales and chords and arpeggios without music, improvising without any concrete theme or goal in mind, just, you know, developing their facility in their ears. 
You can think of it as practice, or you can think of it as exploration. There's the famous story about the saxophonist John Coltrane, one of my big heroes, playing the C major scale for 13 hours. He was one of the most tireless explorers of the 20th century. You can do the same thing as a painter. Abstract, non-representational painting is a fantastic thing to work at because it's the most extreme test of one's compositional and creative abilities. Without a subject, the success of the picture rests solely on design, color, and composition. Painting without reference or definite subject really develops the imagination and encourages the artist to respond to what the paint is doing. I mean, what could be more thrilling, you know, more natural, more uncontrived than playing with the painting, turning the paper upside down, and suddenly seeing something emerge, seeing something to develop, whether it's representational or abstract. Discovery. Devoting some serious time to this approach will make you a better painter, no matter what subject matter or style you choose. Or should I say, not choose? Because I think artist styles are dictated as much by what they can't do as by what they can. A very interesting thing to ponder. Abstraction plays a big role in my work, even in my representational paintings. For me, abstraction, or abstract elements, add a power to the composition and design of a piece and a mystery that keeps me thinking and wondering. Unconventional and innovative, Nicholas Simmons is a breath of fresh air to water media techniques. Join the 2007 National Watercolor Society top prize winner as he works large scale and reveals how challenges unique to water media can be turned to an artist's advantage with stunning results. He incorporates blooming, crawlbacks, bleeding, and puddling, and demonstrates methods for integrating massed areas with wet into wet painting. Nick mixes watercolor with fluid acrylics, encourages the paper to buckle, and boldly wields a spray bottle to achieve textural effects. Anticipating his own tendencies, he works safeguards into his process and offers compelling commentary along the way. This approach is perfect for artists striving to achieve a looser look while maintaining control of the final painting. Whether you work in watercolor or acrylics, you'll find a new take on your favorite medium in Innovative Water Media with Nicholas Simmons.